All right, welcome everybody. So in this video, we are going to calculate the orthogonal projection. We'll see how this operation works when we're working with not just an orthogonal basis for a subspace, but an orthonormal basis for a subspace. So let's consider a vector u1, which is one third minus two thirds, two thirds, u2, which is the column vector two thirds, two thirds, one third. So these are two vectors in R3. And if we take the span of these two vectors, then we get a subspace W, which in this case would be a plane in R3. And these two vectors are orthogonal to each other. And the magnitude of each of these vectors, the length of each of them is one. So recall that we get a nice property that if we consider the vector U, whose column vectors consist of uh, vectors from this orthonormal basis, then when I take the product of U transpose with U, we get the identity matrix back. Uh, when I take the product in the other direction, U and U transpose, we don't necessarily get the identity matrix back. So let's see how these matrices may play a role in this projection calculation. In any case, we're going to see that when, in addition to orthogonality, each of the vectors in our basis is a unit vector, these calculations simplify quite a bit. And so let's calculate the weights in order to find uh, the projection of y onto the plane uh, w. So uh, normally, we, these weights, <clears throat> if I want to find the first weight, I would take y inner product with u1 and divide that by the inner product of u1 with itself. But because u1 is a normal vector, that denominator is one. And the same for u2, for the weight for u2, because u2 is also a normal vector, it has magnitude one, that the denominator of the usual weight that we have is just gonna be equal to one. So to find the weights, I just need to take the dot product of y with each of the vectors in our uh, basis, orthonormal basis for this subspace. Uh, and so you can check the calculations that I'm showing in the Colab notebook that is linked in the description of this video, but I would definitely encourage you to do these calculations by hand, and then you can check them with Colab. So taking the inner product with uh, y and u1, that gives us 13 over three. So that's when I take the inner product of this and u1. And taking the inner product of y with u2, that gives us two thirds. So I want to take 13 over 3 times the vector u1 plus 2 thirds times the vector u2. And that is going to tell me exactly how what linear combination of these two vectors u1 and u2 that I need in order to get the orthogonal projection of y into that plane, into that subspace w. And so here we can do some arithmetic and compute that this orthogonal projection onto W is equal to 17 over 9 minus 22 over 9 and 28 over 9. Okay, great. So this is how we've been calculating these orthogonal projections. It's a little bit nicer because, again, um, the denominators of these weights are all going to be 1. So let's compare that calculation to what we get if I take um, the product of U and U transpose, where U is going to be the matrix whose columns are each one of the vectors in our orthonormal basis. So let's take the product of U and U transpose and then multiply this vector Y by that product. And again, we need to be careful of the order that we take this product. Since U transpose times U gives us the identity, that wouldn't really do any transformation to this vector. So we want to multiply y by u, u transpose. And again, the calculation here is not too terribly exciting, but you can check when I take u times u transpose, we get the 3 by 3 matrix whose first column is 5 ninths, 2 ninths, 4 ninths, whose second column is 2 ninths, 8 ninths, minus 2 ninths, and whose third column is 4 ninths minus 2 ninths, 5 ninths. So this is done in the Colab notebook, and this was also done in a previous video, if you want to check that more carefully. So I take this 3 by 3 matrix, U 
times u transpose, and I'm going to multiply the vector y that we were given, which was 1 minus 2, 4. And you can check that when I take the product, I get exactly the projection of y onto the subspace w. I get the vector 17 ninths minus 22 ninths and 28 ninths. Uh, and this is true in general, namely that uh, if I have an orthonormal basis for a subspace and I want to calculate the projection of some vector y onto that subspace, well, then I can set up a vector u whose columns are the vectors in that orthonormal subspace. And then the projection is going to be this product u, u transpose times y. So I don't have to calculate each of the individual weights, although that process is consistent with how we've been finding these orthogonal projections using the formula for the weights. So I just want to summarize this result more generally on the next slide. And so the big takeaway from that previous example where the basis for the subspace W, in addition to being orthogonal, all of the vectors in that basis have length one, they're all unit vectors. Then the formula for the projection of Y onto the subspace W simplifies. And instead of calculating all of these weights, um, although the calculation for the weights gets simpler as well, we can just compute this matrix product of U and U transpose, and then multiply that resulting matrix um, on the left, we're going to multiply um, y on the right. And these two uh, results are going to be consistent. So if I have an orthonormal basis consisting of u1, u2, all the way up to up, um, which is a basis, an orthonormal basis for this subspace w, then the projection of y onto w, again, we can calculate by taking u, u transpose times y, um, where this matrix u has um, columns that are made up from the basis elements u1, u2, up to up.